many of you knew you could count atoms? A few of you. You probably dipped your toe into counting atoms in physical science. Um, typically in physical science, we don't do a whole lot of stoichiometry. This is stoichiometry. It's fun to say and fun to do. Um, we get your toe wet, and then you move into heavier duty stoichiometry when you get to chemistry. So we are going to count atoms in a sample. The thing we have to know in order to count atoms is the mass of the sample. And I have a pretty little piece of copper right there. And we can get the mass of this piece of copper, yes? Okay, good. So we can get the mass of this piece of copper, and the mass of this piece of copper is actually related to the number of atoms in the copper. There's a relationship that exists. Do individual atoms have mass? Yeah. Yes, you've been looking it up. You've been writing it down. You know that. Woohoo! All right. So there's a relationship between the mass of an individual atom and how many of them there are. And we're going to, that's what we're going to start working with today. The mole! <laughs> um, from the responses I got in both classes, there are some misconceptions about moles. So, mole is an SI unit, just like, name me another SI unit. Name me an SI unit. Picograms? Okay, picograms, sure. Name me an SI unit. Kilometers, name me an SI unit. Centimeters, name me an SI unit. Millimeters. Millimeters, okay. We could say grams, we could say all kinds of things. If we're measuring the mass of something, we're going to use grams, picograms, milligrams, kilograms. If we're measuring the length of something, we're going to use meters, centimeters, kilometers, any of those. What moles measure is the amount of stuff there is. This is a really weird one to get your head around. It's not mass. And that's one of the most common misconceptions I see in the responses that I got, that um, moles measure the mass of atoms. They do not. What units do we use to measure the mass of atoms? Atomic mass units. Yeah, atomic mass is given in. Atomic mass units. Who's buried in Grant's tomb? Grant. Um, yeah. So they don't measure mass. They don't measure the size of atoms. They measure the amount of stuff we have. And a mole of something. So you all know that in this piece of, let's, let's imagine that I have a lump of carbon in my hand. Okay, I'm imagining a lump of carbon. If I have a lump of carbon, you know that it's a mixture of carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14 atoms, yes? Okay. If I'm able to somehow separate head up all of the carbon 13 and 14 atoms out, and I have a lump of pure carbon 12 in my hand, if I had 12 grams of carbon 12, that's a particular number of atoms of carbon 12. One mole of stuff is that number of atoms. So this, imagine, everybody, everybody take your hands and pull out your imaginary lump of carbon-12. All carbon-12, no carbon-13, no carbon-14. If you had exactly 12 grams of the stuff, there would be a very specific number of atoms of that carbon-12. That number of atoms is a mole. The same number of pieces. We talk a lot about in this. You can put your imaginary samples down if you need to. <laughs> um, the same number of pieces or particles or chunks, however we want to talk about it, that there would be in that 12 grams of carbon-12, that's a mole of stuff. And there's a very specific number associated with that. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pieces, particles, chunks, atoms, molecules. 6.022 to 10 to the 23rd pieces of anything is a mole of that thing. Anybody guess when mole day is? It's coming up. It's October 23rd. Uh, 10, 23. Yeah, mole day. We celebrate mole day around here. Okay, so a mole of anything. You can have a mole of anything. You can have a mole of Reese's peanut butter cups. You can have a mole of chocolate chip cookies. 
You can have a mole of... Rabbit chipmunks. You could have a mole of rabbit chipmunks, but I would not want to be in the same room. You could have a mole of rabbit chipmunks. Um, um, you can have a mole of anything. And it's a lot of pieces. If you had a mole of dollar bills, you probably couldn't spend that in your lifetime. <laughs> you got to come up with a mole of dollar bills. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. There are mole. Of, there aren't even a mole of people on this planet. There are not a mole of people on this planet. It's astounding. It's astounding to me. So. No matter what the substances we're talking about, ducks, socks, M&Ms, pencils, lunch boxes, cups of soup, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of them is a mole of them. We can have, what we most typically talk about are a mole of atoms or a mole of molecules. And we shorten that up so we can say a mole of atoms of calcium. A mole of atoms of calcium is a mole of calcium. So your book uses the phraseology, a mole of atoms of. What I'm telling you right now is that when you read those, don't get confused. That just means a mole of that substance. How did they get that? Ah, that's, that's a longer tale than we're going to tell here. And I'm not even clear on all the details. Okay. It's, the, the idea was initially theorized by Emilio Avogadro. It was not determined experimentally until much, much later. He was, he was like a 16th century Italian. Remember we said rich white guys doing chemistry in their basements? Yeah. Avogadro was one of those. This was like 16th century, 15 something or other. Um, and he's got like six names because he's minor nobility. So he's got all the different names of all of his families that have joined together and all of their principalities and nobilities and duchies and whatever else. You know, so he's like Emilio something, 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 Avogadro. <laughs> and you'll... I'm sure you'll find it. Yeah, wouldn't it? So, all you need to do is be royalty. Okay. Avogadro's number is the number of pieces in a mole of a substance. One mole of something is that many pieces. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, you'll remember that number for the rest of your lives. You probably won't even need to add it to your science tattoos on your forearms when you get your periodic table and your kinematics equations after physics. Now, molar mass. And there are a bunch of terms we use here. You, you want to, I, I'm big on precision of language. So the molar mass of a substance, this is like Grant's tomb, is the mass of one mole. It's kind of like atomic mass units measure atomic mass. Molar mass is the mass of one mole. So if we look at the periodic table, grab your periodic table, um, agenda, textbook, if you're, if you're walking around with a device on you, there are several decent periodic tables on an app store that are, you can download. I've, I've downloaded a couple, some I like, some I don't. Where is the, there it is. It's reference page 15. Okay, so if we look at copper, okay, I see you. I see you. Yeah, you can't read those. Um, if we look at copper, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pieces of copper is one mole of copper and is going to have a mass that's identical to the atomic mass, except in grams. So if we look at copper, what would be the mass in grams of one mole of copper? Somebody in... Red, orange, or pink? Wow. What are the odds? Yeah. Well, we'll count, we'll call orange part of that family. So one of the two of you. So find, first of all, locate copper. You located copper. Now, what's the atomic mass of copper? 63.546. On, on the Flynn one in here, they rounded to 63.55. The molar mass is just the atomic mass in grams. So, Casey, what's the molar mass of copper? Same numbers, different units. 
grams. Exactly. That's all it is. So when we're talking about atomic mass, it's in what units? Atomic mass units. Okay. Atomic mass is given in atomic mass units. Grant's tomb. Grant's tomb. Molar mass is given in grams. Okay. Molar mass is measured in grams. It's the mass of one mole. I'm going to stop this.